Well, it's time for another superhero movie, only unlike any superhero movie I've ever done, because at the Channel Point's request of Jambo today, we're going to review Orgasmo, released in 1997. So Orgasmo is a superhero sex comedy film, that is quite a sentence, which was written, directed, and edited by Trey Parker, and also produced by his South Park co-creator Matt Stone. Parker also stars in the film as Joe Young, who's a devout Mormon who somehow becomes a porno star. And somehow from being a porno star, he becomes an actual superhero. In addition to Parker, Stone also had a role in the film, including Diane Batcher, Robin Lynn Rabb, Michael Dean Jacobs, Toddy Waters, and a whole host of actual porn stars. One of them was Ron Jeremy, and considering what's gone on with him recently, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and not mention him past this sentence. The film cost a little over $600,000 to make and was actually rated NC-17. I think it might be the only NC-17 film we've ever done on the channel, and as a result it had a very limited release in the US, so the box office numbers weren't disclosed, but it was probably at a loss. They also released an unrated version, I have no idea which one I have for you today, but it was also released on Blu-ray in 2015. The film got mixed reviews from critics, but those who like South Park seem to really like it, and it's become more of a cult film nowadays. But just how much of this film am I going to have to censor? Well, let's find out right now as we review Orgasmo, released in 1997. So our film begins in Los Angeles, California, where two Mormons from Utah, Robert and Joe, are trying to spread the good word of Jesus. They're not having much luck though, as not many people here are interested in Jesus. Meanwhile, at the same time, a porn director named Max Orberson is trying to shoot his new film, Orgasmo, but is having some production issues. The Mormons then knock on the door of the porn house, and the security guard starts beating up Joe, at which point Robert ditches him, which is the last time we ever see see him in this film. Turns out Joe's a very skilled martial artist though and he takes the security guard down, as well as like five more. Orbison is impressed with Joe's skills and pretends to be interested in Jesus and all that. He then offers Joe the role of Orgasmo in his new film, but Joe turns it down because he's a good Mormon boy who can't do porn. He convinces Joe, however, by telling him they'll use a stunt cock so he won't actually have to penetrate anybody, and he'll pay him $20,000 for two days work. Joe decides to accept the job and then calls his fiancée Lisa to tell her that he was cast in a movie, he just doesn't tell her what kind of movie. The next day, he arrives on set and meets Ben, who plays his sidekick, Chota Boy. Ben is actually a brilliantly educated man with two PhDs, but he does this by choice because he's ultra horny and not good with the ladies, and it's the only way he can get any action. The first day of filming goes well enough, although it does leave Joe pretty traumatized. Afterwards, they go to Fresh Sushi, owned by a man named G-Fresh, who is being threatened by a local dance club owner who wants him to sign away his land. After another day of filming, Ben invites Joe over to his house and shows him his hamster shrine. Turns out Ben is also a skilled martial artist and used to do this style called hamster style, but he's sworn off it. He then shows Joe something even more impressive. You see, the weapon that Orgasmo uses is the Orgasmonator, and Ben has built a real one. No, seriously, it actually works, and after they give themselves orgasms, they go around town giving random people orgasms. They end up finishing the film, and it becomes a massive hit. In fact, it becomes the third most successful movie of all time. Throughout this, Joe is still trying to get his check from Mr. Orbison, but Orbison keeps blowing him off. Meanwhile, back at the sushi place, G-Fresh gets attacked by those men again and beaten very brutally and is forced to sign over his shop. Back to Joe, he's attending a party for the success of Orgasmo and finally gets his check from Mr. Orbison. Orbison tells him, though, that if he agrees to make an Orgasmo 2, he'll double the money, giving him $40,000. Joe can surely use this money to pay for a big wedding with Lisa in the temple that she wants, so he calls her again and tells her about the sequel, again not telling her what kind of sequel. On a set of Orgasmo 2, Joe meets A-Cup, who is Orbison's asshole nephew, who is playing his nemesis in a movie, Neutered Man. He is not affected by the Orgasmonator because he doesn't have a penis. Afterwards, Joe and Ben go to the sushi place and see what happened to G-Fresh, and they're so upset about it, they decide to go over to the dance club and get that contract back. And they do just that, invading the place and beating up those asshole thugs. Afterwards, Joe returns home to find Lisa waiting for him, come to surprise him in LA until the shooting of his movie's over. 
Oh no. Don't worry, I'm sure she'll never know. It's not like she's gonna go to a video shop and see the movie playing on a television there. Uh-oh. Meanwhile, after another day of shooting Orgasmo 2, Ben runs into those thugs that they beat up and turns out they work for Orbison. Joven returns home to find Lisa watching Orgasmo, and she's like, Joe, you have to quit, and he's like, you know what, no, I like being Orgasmo. So she leaves, and he says, ah, heck! Joven confronts Orbison and tells him he's done, he's quitting, and Orbison says that if he does, he'll be sleeping with the fishes, but Joe walks out anyway. In retaliation, Orbison has Lisa kidnapped and held up in the mansion. Joven collects Ben, and they plan to storm the mansion. They make their way into the mansion and take down all the guards until they finally meet A-Cup, who seems to be a martial arts match for both of them. Joven convinces Ben to unleash his hamster style, which he does, using it to finally take A-Cup down. Orbison then holds Lisa at knife point and Joe goes to shoot him with the Orgasmonator, but it's at a battery. Luckily, Orbison then goes for a very long monologue, which gives Ben enough time to charge it. He shoots Orbison with the Orgasmonator like five times until he falls into a pool with a killer whale floaty, so now he's literally sleeping with the fishes. Except he's not, because killer whales are mammals, but maybe that's part of the joke. They save Lisa and arrest Orbison and all the others, and then Chota Boy uses his cock rocket to blow up the mansion. A few days later, Joe and Lisa are planning to go back to Utah, and Joe has an emotional goodbye with Ben. Lisa then realizes that the best thing for Joe, in fact what God intended for Joe, is for him to be Orgasmo, and stay with Ben and fight crime. And then they vow to do that, and Joe even gets the thumbs up from Jesus himself. The film then ends with Orbison going to a doctor who tells him that he's orgasmed so many times, they're gonna have to amputate his penis. Orbison goes insane and swears revenge on Joe, becoming Neutered Man, setting up for a sequel that never fucking happened. Well, first off, I want to say, even though this film was extremely raunchy, I don't think it would have gotten an NC-17 rating if it was released in 2022, because I've seen worse. And speaking of raunchy humor, if you don't like raunchy humor, well then you're probably not gonna like this film. But if you like South Park, like I said earlier, you'll probably enjoy it. I think it was a little bit of a step down from South Park and some of their future films. I've never seen Cannibal the Musical, but I've seen Team America World Police. Dear God, I don't know if I could even do that one on this on this channel. <laughs> that one might be too much for this channel, I'll tell you what. But even though it was a slight step down comedy-wise, I still did enjoy it. But honestly, it's kind of a niche film because that's what it banks on. If you like the South Park type of humor, you'll like this. If you don't, then you definitely won't. I do want to give a shout though to Matt Stone for his character of Dave the Photographer in this film. I did not mention him during the review because he's not at all integral to the plot, but he was probably the funniest character in the whole movie. But that's pretty much going to do it for my special Monday review of Orgasmo. This wasn't supposed to be on Monday, but I decided to flip the days. Next week's review, though, of East is East should still be on Sunday. That is going to do it for me today, though. Thank you again, Jambo, for using your points on this, and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the description down below. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of Orgasmo, released in 1997, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.